Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to shine a light on the prince of all saints, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, the second character to achieve this transformation, second after Goku. Vegeta may have always been in Goku's shadow in the anime, but was he in the hit Mobile Game Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle? Like seriously, just how good was Vegeta through the years of Dokkan? The first year of Dokkan wasn't that good for Vegeta, all he got was like an SRGT Vegeta who was, well, um... Let's go over the next year? This year was already looking way better for GD Vegeta, but nothing that crazy. We had the release of the Tech Super Saiyan Vegeta who was okay at the time, but he struggled for linking partners since the GD link was not common at all at the time. We also had a new GT Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta that year who had a very good passive, but man did I mess up his links up. This guy had no prepared for battle. No over in a flash and no shocking speed. All the links were relevant at the time, especially on his teeth. His Goku counterpart had a way better link set, a passive that would only get better with time, and a pretty clutch giant transformation. At least the GD Vegeta's that here were pretty good against the Omega Shenron Dokkan event, because he has back then the Red Zone and SBR of today were the Dokkan events of yesterday, so it's not that bad. 2017 was looking bright for GD Vegeta with the release of the first ever Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta was an outstanding unit at the time. His 120% beef start of turn defense coupled with his medium chance of countering enemy super attack made him one of the best defensive units in the game. His mono EGL team was literally unkillable, but at the time offense was still more value than defense so he was considered one of the worst god leads at the time, only ahead of monstrosity like Inkidu, <laughs> if you know you know. His Super Saiyan 4 Goku counterpart was also way better, but he hit harder and had literally perfectly been partner in the GT Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Fortunately that didn't last long, as soon as we got our first hard event in the game, Super Bad Road, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta climbed the ladder faster than ever. Now that defense was valued, this guy was one of the best units in the game. Since not only was he more valuable now, units on his team like AGL Super Vegeta and LGL Golden Frieza were also more valuable now. Tech Super Saiyan Vegeta also got a very good awakening later that year. An awakening that not only got better with the introduction of the Shadow Dragon Saga category, he had both offense and defense which made him an all-around great unit for that category. That was pretty limited at the time. Before the end of the year, we also had the awakening of the Strength Super Sentry Vegeta who was very good, but instead of being a buff for the other GT Vegetas, he was obviously a buff for Goku. Curse you, Kakarot! Always one step ahead of me! Funny enough, the following year we had a new Super Sentry Vegeta who had a great passive, but a horrendous leak set again. No over the flash and crappy things. Another shaft for GT Vegeta. But not only for Vegeta, I'm actually getting shafted myself right now. How are only 2.9% of you watching subscribe to the channel? That's literally like 10 times lower than the chance of Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta capturing a Super Attack. Like bro, my boy, subscribe to the channel now! 2019, GT Vegeta got his first ever ally, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, who was good but just so much worse than his Goku counterpart. His leader skill was worse, Ichi was more valuable than defense at the time, and the Vegeta's family was, and still is to this day, way worse than Goku's family can. He also raised attack instead of defense on his top key, but still somewhat hit like a feather before his attack passive built up. And that's because attack and defense on super are like not calculated the same. Like the attack multiplier mul multiplies the base attack stat just after the leader skill, but the defense multiplier is added after pretty much everything, which includes like needs and support. Which is why it's like more impactful. Anyways, Vegito is still the second best unit in the game at the time of his release. He was good in Super Bad Road and the legendary Goku event that came out later that year. 2020. Well, all we got was a 4 GP grid in Vegeta. I literally have nothing to say about this guy. He was useless on release and still is to this day. We also had the Link level update, which was a huge buff for all the Super Saiyan 4 units. GT and Saiyan War were already very good Link before that update, but after that update, man, they become like top tier Links. 2021, a good year for Vegeta. For the Golden Week, we had the release of a new GT Vegeta who was very good. His ability to create Rainbow Key Sphere made him a must run on pretty much all of his team. And contrary to his Goku counterpart, Vegeta's defense wasn't restricted to a specific team. His leader skill was also very good. With the same update, he had the ability to run both the second and fourth year anniversary on the same team. Finally, a Vegeta wasn't worse than his Goku counterpart, and even arguably better. Sadly, that didn't last long. Literally two weeks later, we had the easy of HL's person for Vegeta. 
and he got shafted yet again. Stacked attack for 6 turns instead of defense like Goku. And like I said before, because of how defense is calculated on Super, you are mad for stuff like that, it is just way more attack. But nonetheless, he was still very good, and with that super attack counter, he was a top tier option on MUS Goku team or the God event in general. He was also very good in both the GT Legendary Goku event and Legendary Vegeta yeah, event that really started. At the end of the year, we had the Awakening of the Tech Super Saiyan Vegeta, who was a very solid option for both the GT Legendary Goku event and the Legendary Vegeta event, even though his league says no 2022. The year started with a new Super Saiyan for Goku and Vegeta LR. And you know, since he wasn't alone on the card, they just couldn't trap him, and they were simply the best unit in the game. They dominated pretty much everything that existed at the time. He also had the easy of the strength LR person Vegeta, who was actually incredible, on par or maybe even better than his Goku counterpart. Unfortunately, actually no, there's no unfortunately, Vegeta actually got his W for the first time in 7 years. But he, yeah, he did it. Also, in GT, Vegeta was way more runnable than his Goku counterpart in the red zone because of his higher defense. So actually, two Ws for Vegeta that year. Unfortunately, yeah, we had it coming. Except the 7th year anniversary LRs, every other Vegeta he shot pretty quickly with the introduction of Cell Max and the Wicked Blood and Red so later that year. Well, actually, strength super for Vegeta was decent against the Metal Cooler core, but yeah, that's pretty much it. 2023, the year just started and we already got a top tier new Vegeta unit. Okay, sure. Goku's there yet again, but you know, you activate the standby skill and it's only Vegeta and he gives 80 and 80% attack to the whole rotation. Like, what were they smoking actually? <laughs> and if you die, Goku just comes out of nowhere and hits the enemy with the universal spirit bomb, transporting them into another dimension. As for the rest of the year, we could see an easy year for any of the GT Vegetas that released before 2021. Or, bro, honestly, if they were to go crazy, we could potentially see the easy of in GT Vegeta. Actually, if you're watching this video after your 8th anniversary, let me guess. Vegeta got shafted yet again? <laughs> Honestly, I really hope not, but if he did, I guess that's just life, isn't it? Anyways, thank you for sticking till the end. You're a real one. I hope you subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Peace.